which is um, we 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 we, we um, to be precise, we, we fixed let's say we fixed an x naught, and then we had this KGB set x zero up to x n minus one is the KGB set. These are the Yeah, strictly speaking, there's some H conjugacy. There's the representatives of some. But when you fix the cut, that you fix the line, you're fixing the unit. Sorry, say the last thing again. When, when you choose a cut, yes. You're choosing an unit. No. No, no. I mean, we're already in a fixed real form. Once I fix x naught, um, I'm working inside a, a, a given real form. Okay. Um, So, uh, so, so it, 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 it's um, when I come back and ask me again if it's not clear after the SL2 example. Whoa! Okay. Okay. You can go home now. <laughs> Um, I'm, so let me just say one thing. One, one thing that's confusing, it took me several years to get used to this, is the various kinds of conjugacy. So these elements are all conjugate to each other by G. They're all conjugate to X naught. There's, for every G, there's a uh, G, G, I, X naught, G, I inverse is equal to X, I. G, C. Yeah, G, C, absolutely. G, I contains a G, C. Um, but, you know, here you're only, they're, they're distinct as, as modulo conjugation by H. Alright, so, um, so that's a sketch. We're getting characters of this diagonal carton, different real forms of this diagonal carton. In order to understand that, we need to understand something about the connection between, uh, something about carton, the, the connection between the analyst picture of carton subgroups and the classical traditional picture of carton. So I'm going to have a digression about that. <coughs> yes? I mean, K is just one of these numbers, zero to n. It's just, it's just labeling an KGB on. <coughs> yes? Sorry. So you're saying that this XI... Yeah, I shouldn't have said Z here. I should have said the set zero through n minus one. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so each one of these x i you said is a representative of an H C conjugacy. Correct. All right. So let's talk about Cartan subgroups. So to be precise, we should fix uh, an x naught, and then use that to define our fixed theta x naught. And I'm only saying that when you have an x. It, it's only, you should really only think of it as giving you an involution of H. Um, but for this base X, when you're choosing one of them, it's okay. You can say, this is my, this is giving me an, an, an involution of all of G. So we really do have an involution of G, and the fixed points is this case of X naught. <clears throat> and the precise statement of the KGB theorem is that once you fix X naught, you get this bijection between K X naught, <coughs> Uh, for, uh, you know, the, the, this, 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 this double coset space with KX0 and the uh, theta X0 part on stable part on subgroups modulo conjugation by KX0. That's just a, a more precise version of uh, the, the standard KGB statement. Uh, and uh, so, um, oh wait, I'm sorry, I, I left out a letter. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry uh, um, that, that's mod, there's a mod W missing there. Um, so this first statement is uh, A X naught mod G mod B modulo W is the um, theta X naught stable carton. So it's the KGB space, of course, is KGB. But I mentioned in the lemma last time that if you mod out by the action of W, that that's actually giving you the Cartan subgroups. So that's, that's, that's what's missing there. And so um, if you drop the W, there's a map from here to Cartan subgroups. 
um, but through the projection to this to this thing. Well, <laughs> um, so w w this uh, to be uh, this is slightly bad notation. What I should say is fix an x naught in this quote unquote KGB space, and then use that to define theta x naught, and then. Um, I mean, this 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 KGB. What what does this KGB mean? There, there's no such thing as K. This is sort of this is this is a sloppy notation. So um, to to be precise, what I should say is fix x naught in the KGB space, which is to say you parameterize something and it parameterizes zero through n minus one. I mean, it's it's like a it's like a principal bundle thing. If you have a principal bundle, um, it, it there it, it, there's a bijection with the the fiber, but it depends on a, a, a base point. You have a set which parameterizes something, but in order to actually do it, you need to choose a base point. That's what this is about. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Which has a Oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, sorry, I um, I, I didn't, I just didn't write this. Well, also, the, the statement was that the first display on the screen is incorrect. No, but that's that's this. That that's the correct. Should have been replaced by this. So the the um, I confused you because when I replaced it, I forgot, I didn't carry this along. So the only change going from here to here is you should be modding out by W. Oh, good.
So here's a dangerous bend. Um, it's frequently possible, in fact, I'd say it's necessary to gloss over some of these technical details or else you go crazy. Um, and as I was saying, in particular, the software never actually constructs this H prime. This H prime is the GHG inverse from the previous slide. These, these, these H primes are all the different carton subgroups or representatives inside G. And they're not diagonal. Well, one of them is, but then there are all these other ones. The software doesn't know anything about those. And the, the, really the hard part is learning to go from this you know, purely diagonal stuff to, to general, the, the, the classical picture. Yes. Is there a way in Atlas to ask for it? No. I mean, it'll tell you, I mean, it's isomorphic to, it's isomorphic to, um, here's somewhere this guy. I mean, it's, it's isomorphic to this, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a real Carton subgroup, it's isomorphic to this diagonal Carton with its data, but it's just sitting in somewhere else inside your, your, inside your group. And, you know, the, the usual thing that, that, well, okay, you can choose an isomorphism, but you need to choose all these isomorphisms carefully and consistently. Okay? All right, so let me pause. And um, I'm just going to play my favorite, <coughs> one of my favorite clips here. Oh, no, wait, what? Oh, no, that's not it. I'm going to do that. Oh, my God. Oh yeah, here it is. My name is Matt. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not in the mic. And, uh, and, and the Cartan evolution. You have these functions. 
And um, it's worth keeping in mind that the imaginary roots is a root system, and the uh, and you get also get a, a set of positive imaginary roots because just by intersecting with the positive roots, and um, you can therefore define row i, which is the row for the imaginary system. And similarly for the real roots, you get real roots and real positive roots, and something called row r. Uh, on the other hand, the complex roots are usually not a root system, so don't fall into that trap. Okay. All right, so we have our parameter, um, that's, um, x lambda nu, and uh, associated to the parameter is a very important invariant, which we always call gamma, um, which is, there's a one missing here, one, one half one minus theta times lambda plus one half one plus theta times nu. And this is an element of the dual of the rational, a rational dual of your of this Lie algebra. Okay? And uh, it's well defined on these quotients. Lambda is really only defined up to something, but when you take one minus theta lambda, that's well defined. Oh uh, sorry. Uh, oh, did I get them backwards? Yeah. Sure. I've done that before. Sorry, uh, it's one plus theta and one minus theta. Sorry. The, the software is right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And um, and it's it's really helpful to keep in mind this is the infinitesimal character you get by the harsh under homomorphism. Home so uh, that's a basic invariance. Uh, we say that a parameter is standard if this infinitesimal character satisfies uh, um, satisfies something for all roots. Satisfies greater than zero. Uh, that's, yes, yeah, so um, strictly speaking, what I should have said is that uh, the, the orbit, of, the W orbit of gamma is what specifies the infinitesimal character. Um, okay, so the, uh, the, I dropped the greater than zero here. This, um, the condition is this positivity for all of the imaginary groups. And uh, sometimes we just say gamma is imaginary dominant. And, um, we say that P is final if this funny condition holds, which is that if you have a root, you know, I have a lot of misprints, so there's an alpha check there. If you have a root which is uh, a real root which is singular, then there's a parity condition on uh, required. That this this is a parity condition to say that this number, this is a, this this inner product is an integer, and I'm demanding that it be even. And this is what's called, this is a, a parity condition. And these are two, well, there's a two things that the definition of, of, a, of a parameter. So here's the official definition. Uh, um, well, sorry, not the definition. Um, here's, here's how it works. Suppose you're given a parameter. Um, associated to that parameter is this involution of H. You get this corresponding real form of a, HR of H and it hands you a character of the row cover, and this character satisfies its differential is this gamma. Okay, so and that's just, um, that, that's just from following through the definitions from David's talk this morning. There's nothing, it's just, uh, I mean, G is playing a very little role here. You know, the only, uh, this is all essentially a statement about this carton and this data. You know, the only place that row that, that, that the group plays any role is in the row cover. So this is really just a statement about the um, cartons. And again, the hard part is is um, how to uh, go back to the traditional picture. All right. So now let me illustrate this with an example. So let's take SL2 and um, the. Uh, the KGB space has three elements, T, which is the diagonal line minus I, minus T, and W. We've seen that before. And um, in Atlas, KGB is labeled 0, 1, and 2, where this is 0, this is 1, and this is 2. And um, theta 0 is shorthand for theta, well, the, 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 the theta for KGB element 0. Theta 0 and theta 1 are both the identity, the exact trivially on the, on the carton. And W is acting by inverse on the carton. So the, on the level of the carton, the, the status of W is minus the identity. It's acting by minus 1. Okay. 
And um, so here's an example of a parameter. Uh, and this is an atlas notation. It's hard to see on the screen, but this is when I write things in um, typewriter font or whatever it's called. What's it called, Mark? TT? Typewriter type? TT. This is TT. Um, so this means uh, x is KGB element 0, lambda is the integer k, and nu is 0. That's a parameter according to Atlas. Okay? What representation does that correspond to? Uh, k is any integer, more or less. <laughs> All right? Not so much, not here. So um, the, 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 the Cartan defined by x is equal to 0, well, the Cartan involution is the identity. So we're talking about the compact Cartan. And this k is giving you an, an integer, so you're getting the character e to the i k theta of s1. <coughs> okay? That's how to read an atlas with an atlas parameter. Here's another example. Take the same thing except change the first KDB element, the, the change, change the KDB element to number one. What does that give you? Well, h of r is still compact, and the character is still k. It's so it's e to the i k theta again. It is. <laughs> and so, the, but but the, the key point is this is this zero and one are going to play a role in this. Okay. Uh, but let's go on to the next one. Um, uh, sorry, this is a um, misprint. That should be a two. And um, oh yeah, I should have said when um, uh, when when k is sorry when. When the KGB element is 0 or 1, theta is the identity. So the minus theta fixed elements is just 0. So nu is always, is always 0 here. On the other hand, when theta is equal to, when the KGB element is 2, theta is minus 1, this can be any rational number, r. On the other hand, um, this thing here is an element of z mod 2z. And so it's either even or odd, and here I'm indicating that it's even. Okay? And um, this gives a copy of our cross, and it gives the character absolute value of x to the r. And that's because this thing is even. The, um, if I put an odd integer there, I get the same thing, except now I get the sign character. I know. But, but you want to switch them? Yeah. I know you do. I'm going to leave it. <laughs> I'm going to leave. I'll come back to that next time. I, I, I mean. Well, no, you're probably right. I should put it here. That's a, it's a technical point. Yeah, you're, you're right. Um, there, next time. So, yeah, so I, I'm sorry, I'm glossing over something which is, um, and, and this is in fact is something that has caused a lot of anxiety, a lot of grief over the years, is there's somewhere there's a, 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 a row shift which switches these two cases from what you expect. So, really, 2k is giving you sign, 2k plus 1 is giving you the trivial. Just <laughs> because it's so painful. I, I changed it in our big paper, so, so that. Um, yeah. But in the software. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things we didn't say is, is this a little parameter that's lambda or lambda minus rho? That's lambda. Oh. Um. Yeah, that's exactly what we're. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, in this case it's an integer, but um, it, it, you're right. So, so, so th this this k is the infinitesimal. In the case of the discrete series, this k is the infinitesimal character. All right. So, um, okay. So here's a summary. Uh, Yeah, I'm sorry. So there's some misprints here. So um, these should have twos, and the sign and the non-sign should be switched. 
Now, um, so I'm just summarizing the previous slide. I've also put in some um, some, some constraints here. Uh, um, K. Oh, I should have said that actually in the previous slide. Um, where is that? Uh, right here. By definition, uh, this is supposed to be a, if this for this to be a standard parameter, k has to be greater than zero. That's the uh, the the um, imaginary dominance condition. Huh? Strictly greater for it to be a, a standard. Yep. Um, if it was zero, it would be a limit standard. Um, okay, so, uh, and um, also by acting, uh, it, it, it's, the R is a little bit different. The R doesn't need to be greater than zero, but you can um, replace it. it. It's enough to take R greater than zero. All right, so we're getting these, these four, uh, We're getting these four, uh, two characters of a compact carton and two characters of a split carton. Okay, um, so and so these are supposed to be attached to representations. So what representations are they? Well, it's, it's there's no problem seeing that in these latter two, you you take the Borel, the standard induced minimal Borel for SL2, where the, the carton is R cross, um, put this character on that Borel, and induce it, and that's that's uh, uh, that's not ambiguously the uh, uh, associated representation of G. The, the the tricky part is is what are the the representations attached to these two guys? Well, obviously they're supposed to be the discrete series, and one of them is supposed to be the homomorphic discrete series, and the other one's supposed to be the anti-homomorphic discrete series. But K is positive in both cases. So, what's going on? And that's what I'm going to explain next. What time did I start? Quarter of? Right, let me check. Um, all right, so here's how you figure out the first two lines. Well, the, the easy thing to say is that um, these two representations are giving you the holomorphic and anti-holomorphic discrete series of SL2. And let's not worry about which is which. <laughs> Uh, for a lot of reasons, for a lot of things, it doesn't matter. But so, so like the first time through, when you're thinking about this stuff, it's like, okay, there's two discrete series. I won't worry about which one is which. But let's talk a little bit about how you actually pin that down. Um, in order to be precise, we have to, at this point, we have to pick our x naught. So let's pick our x naught to be KGB element number zero. Um, that's a choice. And um, then, sort of by definition. This parameter with zero here is giving you the, the holomorphic discrete series with Harshandra parameter k. And that's, um, that, that's just sort of built in. Okay? Uh, what about one? So the point is that this is giving you the same character of this S1, but in order to identify it, with a character uh, um, with with a character of the carton, we have to conjugate this element number one to element zero because that's our base point. And so, um, how do you do that? You, there's an element of the bottle group which takes. So I'll, I'll, I'll remind you that T is I zero zero minus I. That's x zero. And minus t, which is x1, is minus i, 0, 0, i. And s alpha, the, the element of the volume, switches these two. Okay. So in order to, like, um, the, the, the way to think of it is that um, on, on this, we have a compact carton subgroup. Um, and in order to talk about it, we have to fix a, a KGB element and a fixed zero. This guy, it's sort of talking about the same carton, except it's got a different x. So in order to identify it, you have to move, conjugate 1 to 0 by using the volume group element. That has the effect of changing k to minus k. And now we're getting the anti-holomorphic discrete series with harder parameter minus k. 
So this is sort of the punchline of my whole talk, that, that uh, uh, um, when you pass from the atlas picture to the classical picture, there's an extra volume element involved because you have to map all of these, 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 um, these x's to your fixed one. Okay? Now, I, I, didn't, I, I could have said the same words for this other parameter with the 2 in it. I really should have conjugated KGB element 2 back to 0. But that doesn't matter because um, uh, you're just talking about, if you just think about it, when you write down the, the principal series, there, there are some choices involved, but they're all going to give you the same representation. And that's because the, on the, on the split, if you're on the split carton, the, if you induce the character nu or the character minus nu, they're um, essentially, at least in the growth in the group, oh, growth in the group isomorphic. Uh, the discrete series are more discerning. They, they tell the difference between positive and negative. So anyway, that's the, uh, the punchline. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now what if I had chosen x naught to be KGB element 1? Well, then I would have switched the two cases. This guy, this parameter, um, uh, I, I reversed it twice. Um, what? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's a terrible notation, I agree. So suppose I choose the preferred KGB element to be KGB element number 1. And there's a misprint here. I think uh, yeah, these two should be switched. So let me write it down. If, if you choose um, T, then 0, K, 0 goes to the holomorphic discrete series, and 1, K, 0 goes to the anti holomorphic discrete series. On the other hand, if you choose, this is x naught is equal to T. If you choose x naught is equal to minus T, then 0, K, 0 is going to the anti holomorphic discrete series, and 1, K, 0 is going to the holomorphic. So that there's some misprints on that slide. This is the correct statement. And so whenever people ask me about this, um, I hem in that haw because I have to. Um, because I can't, there's, if you can't unambiguously say this parameter is the holomorphic discrete series, and this one is the anti-holomorphic discrete series, there's a further choice that's needed to make that statement precise. And many years ago, uh, uh, back, way back at the beginning of time in this project, I remember David made a very important ob observation, which is that there's an outer automorphism of SL2R, conjugation by diagonal I minus I, which switches the holomorphic and anti-holomorphic discrete series. And so there's no intrinsic way to say this one's the holomorphic one and this one's the anti-holomorphic one. It's fundamentally impossible to make that distinction because of this automorphism. So you shouldn't try. And part of the hard part about understanding it, the atlas is that point, is these sort of further choices that are necessary in order to make these statements precise. Yes? Once you say that one of them is the anti-homomorphic, yes. you're saying something about the complex. Yeah, that's right. It's a 